Welcome to this new video about semantic kernel where we are gonna to um, improve a little bit our knowledge of um, kernel object and what you can do with kernel object in RC3. And uh, as usual, it's much more kernel centric. This release candidate uh, put kernel as the main orchestrator object of everything. The iKernel interface, it, it was removed. You have only the concrete kernel class. Kernel, it's the main object you will use to interact with your large language model. You can use kernel to import the plugin and we will see in this example how you can do this and how you can verify that the plugin are imported correctly and verify that you are able to call manually the plugin. And finally, as I, uh, if you want a suggestion for me, you should have some sort of helper to manage your uh, API key base URL, unlike you are doing in Python where you have a nice library calling python.m that is able to look for your path, find the a file called .env and loading um, values from this .env file, I'm suggesting you to do the very same thing. And this because there is a high risk that you inadvertently put some key or some sensitive data inside your GitHub repository and you push to an open source repository. And since leaking of API key or credential in GitHub, it's really, really a big problem. I strongly suggest you that you keep everything outside your Git folder. Okay, this is the second example and it's super, super simple. It is only about creation of the kernel object and verification that you can use the kernel to indeed invoke a simple prompt like, how are you today? So this is the very basic interaction with the kernel. It's ability to simply call a large language model directly without anything, without any plugin, anything else. It's just pure invocation of prompt to a large language model. The main function, the main concept of this example is how you can create a kernel object. As you can see, you just can use a kernel builder and use its extension services to add services. As an example, I'm adding logging and I'm going to ask semantic kernel for log and setting a minimum log level. So as you can see, we have a minimum log level of trace. And then you can add Azure OpenAI chat complexion. That means that I'm going to interact with the OpenAI key hosted in Azure. So I need to specify my model in this situation. I've called my deployment GPT-4T to indicate that I'm using GPT-4 Turbo. And then the name of the model that is GPT-4, the, the name of the general model. And then you need to give the key and the base. First the base and then the key. And that's important because these are the four information you need to interact with Azure uh, OpenAI. And it's imperative that you are not using a OpenAI key written in your source code or in a file that is under your uh, Git folder, because there is the risk that you can push this sensitive information to everyone in the internet. To accomplish this, I'm, I've used Copilot. I've just asked it to Copilot a, please generate a C-sharp class that mimic the Python.m functionalities. And so it uh, came up with the class that I have uh, a small tweak to obtain what I want. It's simply look for all the parent directory until it find a .env file, then open the .env file and split with the character equals, and it will read all the variable that I'm going to use in my semantic kernel example. And this gives me the assurance that I've put my .m file outside in a parent folder of my repository. So there is no risk I'm going to push it uh, to the public, leaking my API key. So when I start my example, the situation is I've put a breakpoint, I'm creating the basic kernel builder. And the reason is uh, that creates the very uh, base configuration for my kernel. For this simple example, it's absolutely enough. And since I've configured chat complexion, I can simply ask to build the kernel and invoke the prompt, how are you today? And verify that everything is okay. And so you can see from the, from the trace of the file that 
uh, function, it was invoked, it gives me the number of tokens, the complexion tokens, and blah, 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 and function succeeded, result as an eye, I don't have feeling of, of experience. And that's caused by the fact that when I created my uh, kernel builder, I'm asking for logging, and that's allowed me uh, to specify to semantic kernel that I want it to log everything. And so I'm going to um, simply uh, write line the result. And this allows me to show that, yeah, as an AI, I don't have feelings, also experience, blah, blah, blah. So I was able to simply interact with a large language model with the kernel in a really uh, natural way. Okay, I admit that the previous example is not so exciting because you are simply um, giving a string to interact with a large language model. So let's examine using an example taken by the official example, how you can interact in a more chat-like um, way. So it is important to know that you are going to interact with a large language model like GPT-3 or GPT-4 using a chat model. So first of all, as you can see in this example, I have a first place where I'm going to look a file called chat YAML inside a folder called prompts. And this is where semantic kernel start to show its powers. This is taken straight from the official documentation of semantic kernel, but it worth a little bit of explaining. Uh, semantic kernel is going to use handlebar. Uh, that is a language for creating uh, some sort of template. So as you can see, the template is, it starts with a message role system. You are an helpful assistant and then it iterate with an each messages. So it's supposed to have all the chat in a parameter called messages and where for each message, it will use a message role, role, the content. And so it, it's creating a chat starting from a message object that has the role and content um, uh, parameters and properties. And the template format is handlebars to specify that we are using the handlebar uh, syntax, we have a description, and we have clearly the input variable that is messages and the history of the chat. Now let's see how we can use this in uh, C Sharp. This is important because we can, as you saw, include all of our uh, prompt inside a nice YAML syntax. We can use handlebar to create a prompt with an advanced syntax and we are simply read all text from this YAML file and create function from prompt YAML method of the kernel. And it will simply create a kernel function. And the kernel function is something that you can invoke with the kernel. So actually I've loaded the whole content of the file. I've passed to kernel telling that I want to use the handlebar prompts template factory. So I've created the kernel function that contains my previous prompt that as I remember you, it's a simple prompt of a chat interaction. Semantic kernel also introduced a simple chat history object that contains a um, simple method for creating a chat. So you can add user message, add a system message. In this example, I'm creating a chat in which I ask it to the assistant what's uh, its name and the assistant's answer, okay, I'm assistant, but you can you can call me Jarvis. And then I told him, my name is Jan Maria. And as the last part of the prompt, tell my name and repeat, how can I call you? So this is to verify that actually I'm passing the whole chat to the prompt. As you can see from my console output, I have the verification that Semantic Kernel indeed called my model. And then if I'm going to step out and I print the answer, result, your name is Jan Maria, you can call me assistance or Jarvis as I mentioned earlier. So this verify and this is confirmation that I was able to send a complex chat to the large language model. So with kernel object, not only you can invoke a prompt directly passing a string, but you can use a handlebar syntax. So you have a template engine to create your prompt basing on object you were passed to the uh, template and semantic kernel already include for you a, a simple template in a chat history object that allows you to create your prompt. So you see that it's really, really powerful to use semantic kernel because you have real flexibility on how you can create a, a prompt to send to your large language model.
And this concludes our second example in which you can interact with the large, large language model with um, semantic kernel, where we saw how you can create a simple template for your prompt in YAML, and especially you can use the handlebar, the handlebar.net porting of the handlebar.js library to create a template with a rich syntax. And we saw that semantic kernel already introduced in its example an example of template and a chat object that allows you to mimic the standard way you are interacting with ChatGPT using a chat model in which you alternate assistance message with um, user message. And this show how powerful uh, Semantic Kernel is to interact with your large language model with a very few lines of code allowing you to use a rich syntax. And I'm waiting you for the next video of the series.